presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Homosassa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good game there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. It is, in fact, Jacob Shoup again, sitting in for Tom O'Brien. He's a bit under the weather today, but uh, he'll be all right. So, the S&P 500, we have up about five points. The Dow Jones up about 13. NASDAQ down about five today. Now, let's see here. The ES is trading right at 4,500, the futures there. Uh, Russell Futures at 1858. NQs at 1539, and then the Dow futures at 34,950, and always changing. Gold contract trading at 1953. We have some upward pressure with the gold contract as um, some of the deflation fears in China were uh, kind of dissipating. Silver at 2348, and that essentially brought some upward pressure into the gold market. And then we have the copper contract trading at 377. Now, light sweet crude oil futures trading at 9159, the Brent at 9438. Tesla 265.91. Steel Dynamics cracking its consolidation on uh, some kind of substantial volume actually. They did 98 bucks. So Stand to see what happens there. If we could have rejected that with light volume and really moved to the top of its consolidation, I think that would have been a beauty. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, for a few months now, uh, since you know, basically in June, it really hasn't cracked that consolidation level, the $100 mark, um, with any substantial volume. Uh, it's kissed it a little bit, but it's come right back. And uh, it's the first time we've really broken down uh, past it with some volume. So not a great look for Steel Dynamics as it stands now. The dollar... At 105.17, the Qs 370, Google trading 139, Meta 301, Disney uh, doing a little uh, doing a little bit better, right? Come back from that 79 area, and uh, we are trading currently at 85.26. Raymond James uh, put out a good analysis of them, saying that streaming uh, would probably have positive revenue. So currently they're doing a one dollar um, subscription for streaming to try to get people. Uh, onto their service. And then Apple at 178.67. Okay. So what are we looking at right now? I want to look at Nova Nordisk. They have some interesting uh, stuff going on. Starting this year, we were coming about that 137 level, 138. Uh, their stock shot all the way up to 21076. And this gap up was on substantial volume. And this is from uh, Ozempic, uh, which is one of their drugs uh, for obesity. And same with Wagovi. Obviously, the uh, Americans love this. And uh, Novo Nordisk, Nordisk is actually massive. Uh, you know, it's Europe's second most valuable company. But this company itself is single-handedly carrying the economy of Denmark. It's very fascinating. Denmark's GDP from this grew 1.7% uh, in the first half of this year, um, but might have contracted if it weren't for the company. Uh, Novo Nordisk share price is up over 40% this year, as of Friday's close. Uh, taking its market capitalization to 2.6 trillion, uh, that's in Danish kroner, and that's 379 billion in USD. Uh, this is again from Ozempic and Wagovi, um, some other companies as well uh, who have obesity drugs that are promising, and it is uh, it's sending their stocks skyrocketing. So now, what's happening with it? Uh, well. Today, you can see it's down about 2%, and the FDA has reportedly uh, found objectionable conditions at a Kiwagovi plant. Now, in the short term, 
that's bad, right? And we'll read a little bit on this article. Now, there's nothing wrong with the drugs themselves and their concept, um, but still, this FDA uh, report is not uh, great for them. And we might finish down probably about 2% today. Uh, the volume, honestly, was not substantial for this. And this is much more of like a running headline, but it's good to keep in mind as well, if you're holding Nova Nordisk and you're not really sure what the dive is for. Uh, so, according to Reuters, uh, which cited a MarketWire news report, the FDA inspectors filed a Form 483 following their inspection of Novo Nordisk Clayton, uh, North Carolina manufacturing plant. That form lists any conditions the inspector found that could violate the FDA, um, excuse me, the Food and Drug Cosmetic Act and related acts. Novo lists the Clayton plant as one of three between Clayton and Durham responsible for making the diabetes and weight loss drugs, and that is uh, Wagovi and Ozempic, um, respectively, uh, like Somalgatude. So, uh, for instance, Somalgatude uh, sells as injections, and this is Ozempic and Wagovi, uh, and as an oral medicine called Ribelsis. Ozempic and Ribelsis treat diabetes, uh, while Wagovi is an increasingly popular weight loss drug. Uh, the inspection isn't listed on the FDA's inspection database, uh, but the agency notes that not all inspections are included in the database. For example, inspections waiting for a final enforcement action are not listed. Uh, the FDA generally does not discuss possible completed uh, inspections except with the company involved. Uh, Nova Nordisk spokeswoman said that the company does not publicly share details. So that's why they dropped a little bit today. I, I don't think this is going to be a permanent issue for them whatsoever. Their drugs are still uh, in a very high demand. And as the rest of the world continues to modernize, and um, obesity becomes a uh, bigger risk for them. You know, you think in China and even Mexico as well, I think Mexico is the most obese nation. Um, these kind of drugs will be uh, exceedingly popular. Next on the list, I wanna talk a little bit about Nicola. Give me one second here. I think their ticker is NKLA. So they had a huge pump up today, yes it is. Oh. I clicked the wrong thing. Give me a second. Anyways, they have a new COO, and this shot the stock up uh, pretty substantially, and we'll talk about that. They're up 33% today. Now, famously, this company got shot down. Um, their founder and former CEO uh, essentially lied uh, about nearly all, spa uh, excuse me, all aspects of the business and uh, was charged with two counts of securities fraud, and that was from a United States grand, uh, excuse me, federal grand jury. Um, this really sent the company down quite a bit. There was a lot of hype surrounding this company as a competitor for Tesla, and it didn't shake out that way. Um, they have some other interesting news as well before we get to the COO. Uh, the CEO has come out and said they uh, see their first hydrogen fuel cell trucks being delivered by the end of the month, uh, which is pretty impressive. Now, they did also have a um, uh, essentially a battery recall, but he doesn't think that that's going to really impact the company. One second. We'll get this article back uh, when we return. We actually have Steve Rhodes back as well. He's, uh, you know, Mr. Global, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his trip and go through um, some stocks he's looking at. So, folks, stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, everyone. We have on the line Mr. Steve Rhodes. Steve, are you there? Hey, Jacob, how you doing today? Doing all right. How was your trip? I've been uh, thinking about it. The trip was great, but uh, you know what I, I want to first do, because you were talking about uh, Novo Nordisk and Ozempic. Yeah. Uh, specifically, and I have personal experience with that drug. Sure. So, I, and, and, and it's really kind of apropos for today because I, I, had, I had just gotten back from my primary care physician. I get my blood work done every 90 days. And so this goes back. So Dave White passed away basically um, 60 days ago to the day almost. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and so I start my show and I do my show. As you know, I, I say everything in life happens for us, not to us. The difficult for me at that time is when we lose somebody like that is trying to figure out, you know, how did that possibly happen for us? Right. Um, but about a week before Dave's passing, so I was on Ozempic for a couple of years. And when the drug started getting so popular, people were using it instead of for diabetes. So I was pre-diabetic di pre um, and they were using it for weight loss. It became very difficult to actually get the drug. So I was off of it for a couple of months. Now, I appreciated being off of it, quite frankly, because every time, every week that you took that drug, you were pretty much somewhat nauseous for at least four or five, if not the full seven-day uh, treatment. So it was really uncomfortable, at least for me. Sure. In any event, the drug came back in stock, and I took one-fourth of the normal dosage, knowing that I had been off of it for a couple of months. But I never had any kind of, other than the nausea feeling, I'd never had any bad reactions. However, in this instance here, this is about a week before Dave passed away, um, I got violently ill, more ill than ever. And, and, and it was as if it was the first time where I was saying to myself, I've been poisoned. I mean, that was what the feeling was. So the commitment that I made to myself was to get off of that drug. In fact, after Dave's passing, my commitment was to get off of every single drug. And I did that. Uh, but you've got to do something in replacement for that. And what I did was I went on intermittent fasting. Sure. It's now just a staple program in my life, except when I'm traveling, unfortunately. But um, uh, and so I and I got it down to one meal a day. Here's the here's this here's the snapshot today. My A1C reading is lower than it ever was, even when I was on that drug. I am no longer diabetic. I used to awesome. have diabetic retinopathy in my eyes. That's gone. The doctor said, "Don't come back." I said, well, I got to come back at least to make sure and you know, have you check it out. But I, all of my, all of, I'm on no drugs, no medication whatsoever. And the point that I really want to make here is the only change that I made in my life 
was I went to intermittent fasting, which at first I went to two meals a day, and then I eventually got to one meal a day. Lost a bunch of weight, but the more important thing was on the health side. So for all those people that are out there, I've done it all. I mean, I was on Ozempic, I was on uh, Metformin, I was on Farsiga, all these things out here. We don't, I personally, I'm not, you know, everybody's got to do what they, what's right for them. But I will just simply share with you in six months, in, in 60, six months time, not 60 days, in six months time, Dave passed away March 15, 16, out there. I am free of any drugs anything all i take now is just vitamin d just to keep that up so sure. i just wanted to throw that out there since you were talking about yeah, that fantastic because you know because it's it's a i know why people are using it but there are a whole lot better ways to improve your health and although from a from a intermittent fast and and really quite frankly from an intermittent past fasting standpoint it's one of the ways to get rid of that spike protein whether you've had uh whether you've had a COVID or whether it was the injection you know from a uh uh, from a uh, uh, from a shot or what have you, and it's really important to get rid of that spike protein in your body. And so this is one of the ways to do that. So I just wanted to throw that out there since you were talking about it, sure. and a lot of people take it. And I'm telling you, there is a much better way out there. At least there's a much better. There was a much better way for me, and I had all kinds of nasty things going on, and now everything is just as as good as can be, better than can be. I mean, the A1C level continues to drop. So it's amazing what we can do with regard to food. Now, that one meal a day, uh, Jacob, it doesn't include sugar. You know? right. So you pretty much eliminate uh, one poison in your life, sugar. You can pretty much get rid of a ton of stuff out there. So I recommend that people try that uh, before they go hog wild into Ozempic. I'm not a doctor, but I can share with people my exact experience and what has transpired. Now, really, after the first um, 90 days, of not being on any medication, everything had really improved. Quite frankly, my doctors are saying, well, you re but you really you should take this, or really you should take that. And I said, I'm not doing that. I made this commitment to get off of all medication and to see what would happen by uh, going to intermittent fasting. So I wanted to just simply throw that out there for folks. Well, thanks for sharing that story, Steve. That's, that's awesome. I, I know there's a lot of benefits of intermittent fasting as well, so that's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's extraordinary. And, you know, first you read about it. I bought books, you know, to, you know, that talked about it and what to do. And you have to kind of personalize it for yourself. you got to figure out when it is you're going to eat, sure. uh, so to speak. And that doesn't mean I don't occasionally throw down a snack of a handful of pistachios or some cashews or something like that. But for the most part, it's down to, you know, a couple hours of eating a day. And uh, it turns out you don't actually need as much sleep once you do that because your body, you know, overnight is kind of when it's, it's, it's going through that process. Right. And if it doesn't have to digest a whole lot of food, you end up waking up um, refreshed, so to speak, out there. So I just throw that out there for people. It's a real world, real world, world experience out there. And I was on all those types of drugs and medication, whether it was high blood pressure, hypertension, or whether it was diabetes, um, uh, whether it was heart stuff. Uh, you name it. So in any event, uh, I just just kind of throw that out there. With regard to the trip, you were talking about obesity in countries. You know, go over to Japan. You don't see too many obese people over there. Yeah. In fact, the ones that you do see that are obese are probably are not living in the country. Um, <laughs> So it's 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 also kind of uh, so they have a you know they look pretty healthy, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the folks over there and the trip was great. Uh, it's uh, it's the most friendly group of people country wise that you could ever run into. Now I'm sort of a neat freak, you know sure. if you if you if you were to walk in my closet, it almost looks like you're in a retail store. Sure, just the way everything <laughs> is laid out. Or you open one of my drawers, you know uh, if I pass away and somebody opens up my drawer, they're not going to think I'm a slob. So, you know, and I do believe the way you do anything is the way you do everything. You get over to Japan. So here's the interesting thing. After 9-11, what they did was they got rid of all the trash cans in the streets. And the reason they did that was because they were worried that people would use that for a bomb or something. Uh -huh. So they got rid of all the trash. You don't see a lick of trash anywhere. I've heard this about Japan. I, I mean, it, it is substantially cleaner. Even in their massive, you know, cities, it's clean. Yeah, I'm talking Tokyo. Right, right, how many, right. How many millions of people? You don't see any trash. The first morning uh, that um, that we got there, um, we got maybe a few hours of sleep, and we wanted to go to the uh, fish auction. And the fish auction opens at like 5:30 in the morning. We didn't get there at 5:30, but not not too late sure. after that. 
and we're walking to the fish auction and literally we're outside underneath a, a covering uh, walking up a walkway and we see this guy literally like pushing a mop down this i mean where we couldn't see any dirt <laughs> right you know, that's like our first experience was just how clean everything is. When you hop into a cab, now it's not as much easier. 15 years ago, it used to be consistent. You'd hop into a cab. The drivers are wearing white gloves. I'd say 50% of them still do. There'd be white doilies all over the seats. You're not going to see an amazing, you know, a cleaner cab. Take that compared to we get home. We get in late Thursday night. <laughs> right. We hop in a cab to get home. It's the dirtiest thing we've ever seen. We're just praying that this thing is going to make it all the way to our house. And I know we just ran out of a segment here, but if you want me to, I can stay on. We yes, stay, I want to hear some of the insights of what you're looking into. And that was okay. the whole sounds thing was great. fascinating. So Okay, so, sounds great. Awesome. We'll Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Steve Rhodes. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry tedious text either TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV live every market day from 8:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world from the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money watch online at tfnn.com or on tfnn's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before we get back to Steve Rhodes, because he's on here, I wanted to show you on TFNN.com. You come here, you go to newsletters, we go run all the way down to mastering probability. And again, you know, I, I see a lot of these newsletters. I just want to see what everyone's thinking about. This is fantastic. You get access um, to any of his webinars. You go here and you hit that subscribe button. 
and it is 149 for one month. If you're a first time subscriber, for whatever reason you don't like it, again, I don't see um, why you wouldn't like it. It's fantastic, but it is a 30 day money back guarantee. So go give it a shot. Steve, are you Thanks, with Steve. us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Fantastic. you know, what I wanted to talk about today was really just looking at the markets and what's on fire. And what's been on fire for, for a little while here has been uh, uh, gold. Uh -huh. uh, not gold, uh, Lightspeed Crew, Black Texas Tea, WTI. So what I have up on our screen right now, Jacob, is a five-year seasonal chart. So I use a tool that's produced by the folks over at SeasonX, which is really great because it's for so many instruments where you can see over whatever period of time that you select what the average seasonal cycle is. So and we're going to go through a few of these for, for WTI. So this is the five-year cycle. And right now that red vertical line shows you where we're at today. Day. Now, what this chart shows us over the last five years is that a low takes place in the April time frame. So you go over here to the left, you can see between April and May, you typically see a low and then you see a high that comes in towards the middle of October. So about another couple of weeks from now. So that's what the five year chart pattern analog looks like. When we compare that to what's actually taken place in 2023, you'll see I've got a little green arrow here. That's the low that we saw on May 4th, 2023. So typically the seasonal pattern, I'll go back to it, you get a low in April. Well, I'm going to say that May 4th, and we use this more as a guideline versus an exact to the date time frame, uh, Jacob. So I would say that at this stage here, the five-year is uh, the five years uh, seasonal cycle seems to be in sync with what we've seen so far, which is a low in May, and perhaps we're going to see a high in October. Now, that was five years. If we take a look at a 10-year time frame, the 10-year time frame also suggests a low not in April, but in March with a high coming in in the October time frame. Now, when we take a look at this 10-year seasonal cycle out here, you can see that September is typically flat. We're not flat here in September, but October, November are just horrible over a 10-year period of time. Now, let's expand that out. We go to a 15-year period of time. Well, the 15-year period of time suggests a low in March and a high in October. So, so far, we've gotten 5, 10, and 15. They all suggest that WTI should move higher into at least October. Well, let's go beyond 15 years. Let's add 10 more. We get into a 25-year seasonal cycle. Now, the 25-year seasonal cycle says there should be a top today. Is there a top today? Do I see a top today? I don't see it in my chart patterns, but, you know, we'll pull some of those up for us to take a look at. So, I don't think that it's a, now, it could be but I don't think it's a 25-year seasonal cycle that's really driving the market for WTI. Sure. And then the last thing, I've got data that goes back 32 years. And on that 32-year uh, seasonal cycle chart, it says we make a short-term top today, it lasts for about a week, and then we move higher into the October time frame. So what all of these seasonal charts are really communicating to you and I, Jacob, is to be careful as we get into that October time frame. Any questions so far about what I've shared? No, no, I think that's I think that's great. And uh, I'm not seeing any questions in the den either. Um, you know, it's interesting because we've been speaking about it a lot. And uh, it seems like the Fed might not raise rates this month. But going forward, if we're continuing to see, you know, even really a top in October, um, you know, I'm not sure how well that bodes um, for for the rates going forward. Right. So that's sure. kind of the only thing I have the input on that. And we're not getting any questions in the den. But I mean, pretty fascinating stuff anyway. Yeah, so if I take a look, and now if we go into the chart, so everything here is suggesting that Light Sweet Crude should at least move higher into October. So when I take a look, and we're in the November contract for Light Sweet Crude, this is the monthly time frame. And what folks, what you see on my chart here, first you'll see some dashed lines. Those dashed lines are market profiles. Those market profiles tell you and I where buyers and sellers are located. Now, there's also a center, and the center line, which is 83.98, is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair price with inside that profile range, which was from 73.62 up to 87.43. Now, the month is not over. But if we do close above 87.43, that will then be bullish because price will have broken out above where the sellers are located at 87.43. Now, we also have sellers that are located at 94.34, and that's this dark cloud cover candle. So that is a resistance area. So this suggests that what we should see is uh, light speed crude get up into that 94.34 level. That's what the monthly chart tells us. How about the weekly chart? 
The weekly chart is actually formed an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, those folks that are familiar with this pattern are also going to notice that the B to C retracement, I don't have the line drawn in here, but that B to C retracement is, is less than a 0.382, or it's about 31%, 32%. That typically leads us to more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. But the one-to-one -one on a weekly basis gets us up to 96.70. And we still have resistance at that 94.34 level. So 94.34 is what I'm going to throw out to folks that you really need to keep an eye on because that is prior resistance out there. If I look at the daily chart, Jacob, the daily chart does not have any kind of a topping pattern. It shows us that price is above the top of its profile, 87.27. Price is above its green, this little green squiggly, red squiggly line is referred to as an oscillator and change line. Right. When price is above a green oscillator and change line, it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. So what we have here on the daily time frame are bullish conditions. On the weekly, they're bullish. On the monthly, they're bullish. And here, this suggests that we could see not that we will. We need to let the bars play out. But we could see a TD9 top that takes place between Wednesday and Friday of this week. So we could be seeing a short-term top. I'm not at all suggesting to people listening here that it's just a straight ride up to the 90-ish area out there. I'm not suggesting that at all. But conditions here are very bullish and very favorable, whether it's daily, weekly, or the monthly time frame. Here, when I take a look at WTI, this chart here takes a look at consecutive. This is the uh, weekly time frame chart. But this, what these digits are showing us, uh, Jacob, the black digits are consecutive closes higher. So each week you have a higher close than the prior week. Or the red digits are lower closes, the exact opposite of that. It turns out that on a weekly basis, WTI, especially when it gets going, and it is going right now, tends to move higher for six to seven consecutive weeks. And I've got the blue arrows drawn here, and we're only in week number four. So again, this bodes well for a likely move higher into that middle of October type time frame. So we're already in week number three, or this is going to be week number four. So we're saying maybe two to three weeks out from now. Well, it turns out that gets us into that October time frame out here. So... Um, the other thing that I'll throw out there, I didn't. You, you had mentioned rates, but I didn't take a look at uh, WTI as a result of rates. But in, in essence, we we I've done that by taking a look at the U.S. dollar index. And if we take a look at this, this is a correlation chart. This is a directional correlation chart. And the bottom panel here, when the bars are below zero, tells us we have an inverse relationship. When they're above zero, we have a direct correlation. The dollar moves higher, WTI moves higher out there. And basically, it's been a coin toss over the last uh, oh, for a 10-day average over the last uh, couple of months out there. There's no coin toss when it comes to the energy sector and uh, the XLE and WTI. You can see they are directly correlated with each other. So basically, it uh, looks like Lightspeed Crude is going to continue to move higher out there. And I just simply wanted to share that with you and everybody else that was listening. Yeah, that was awesome, Steve. I mean, that was extremely informative. I, I, I really enjoyed that. And I think everyone Perfect. else did, too. Perfect. Well, Steve. Hey, Jason. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks for the interview and uh, Absolutely. enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, we're glad to have you back, Steve. We will uh, talk to you soon. Take care now. Okay. Bye-bye. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. So we just had Steve Rhodes on. He was uh, giving some pretty good insight into the potential move in uh, light sweet crude. So, you know, any upward trajectory going forward um, is obviously going to increase CPI. Um, Obviously, energy is left out of core CPI, um, so it, it's, it'll be interesting to see where the where the Fed really moves from here on out. I, I still think they're going to have a hawkish stance going forward. I still think the labor market is, is pretty resilient. We are seeing wage decrease. I mean, people, households have seen, I think, an 8.8 percent .8 decrease um, since, you know, the height of COVID times, and of course, that you know, has a little bit to do with some of the stimulus that was being given out. Um, but I also think there is some efforts to start depressing wages uh, as well. Um, they, they're meeting this week here, and we'll, like I said, we'll just have to wait to see what happens. I, like I said, I don't think they're raising rates this month, and they've been pretty um, outwardly spoken about that. Um, but yet, inflation's still around. And uh, we'll have to see what goes forward. And we'll see how the market really responds, um, even to a high, just kind of like general CPI, as, a, as opposed to a core CPI. So we were talking about um, the gold contract as well. It's at 1950, 70, uh, excuse me, 1953.70 currently. And uh, one of the big drivers of this is, is China. And they're lifting temporary curbs on gold imports uh, as the renminbi recovers. Uh, the spread between the Shanghai spot price and London hit record 121 per troy ounce last week. Uh, China's central bank has lifted temporary curbs on gold imports that were imposed on some lenders in a bid to defend the renminbi, uh, but caused the price of the precious metal uh, to rise in their country. Uh, the spread between the Shanghai gold price and London hit a record 121 per troy ounce last week, according to calculations based on public traded prices. Uh, the spread narrowed to 76 bucks on Monday after the People's Bank of China relaxed curbs on imports of the precious metal last week, uh, said people familiar with the informal order given to some state and mid-sized commercial banks. So yeah, they were lifted last Friday, and we'll see how that goes on. It's obviously was sending the price over in China uh, pretty high. Uh, some news for lifts. Let's take a look at them. Uh, they're down 4% today. Uh, this is coming over uh, from a charge the SEC had against them. They're having to pay $10 million uh, in uh, civil penalty over disclosure failures. Uh, so Lyft agreed to pay $10 million to settle securities and exchange commission charges that it failed to disclose a board member's financial interest in a transaction involving the company. Uh, prior to its public listing in March 2019, a Lyft board director arranged the sale of $424 million worth of private shares uh, through a special purpose vehicle affiliated uh, with the director, uh, the SEC said in a statement. Lyft did not disclose the information to the SEC filings for 2019, said the regulators, 
who did not disclose the director's names, and uh, representatives for Lyft, uh, which did not admit or deny the SEC allegations, did not respond uh, immediately. And over a year to date, this has been a pretty unimpressive stock. Um, at least in, in my daily life, I don't know a lot of people who are still taking um, Ubers or Lyfts. Um, now, of course, that's you know just my kind of experience and where I'm at, but you know, sometimes seeing what's going on um, you know, in life is, can be a pretty good indicator of what's going on with the stock as well. And they're trading at 1084 uh, right now. They seem to have a little consolidation pattern in between 10 and 12, and they're really flirting above it. Again, just not a lot of volume coming up above the $12 mark. Um, and it seems like the highest they've really reached this year is about 1277 or something around there. And again, that backed off uh, with significant volume compared to what it usually uh, trades at. So we are moving on from that. Give you one second, sorry, waiting for the computer to uh, respond a little bit. Here we are, finally. Okay. I talk about the cyber attacks consistently, right? And I have um, education in cybersecurity and networking and uh, certification in, uh, from CompTIA as well. Um, and so this is why I feel like I like talking about it a lot and I do think it impacts the economy overall. I do think going forward, there's gonna be some good opportunities to invest in some cybersecurity firms. Uh, I still think that's probably a few years away, uh, but getting it onto the radar, I think is massive. And that's kind of my spiel for that. And this is about Clorox and how this really has real world effects. We just saw MGM uh, get hacked uh, for quite a bit of money by a ransomware gang that uh, does operate out of Western countries. And here we're seeing the supply chain um, getting attacked um, and also profit from a cyber attack that Clorox experienced in August. Uh, so an August cyber attack now contained has led to an elevated level of consumer product availability issues at consumer brands giant Clorox. So Clorox shares slumped lower Monday after the consumer brands group said a recent cyber attack would trigger product shortages and take a bit out of its bottom line. Clor I mean, th that, and that's, re that's really saying something, right? I mean, what an attack. Uh, Clorox said it identified a breach of its IT systems on August 14th and took immediate steps to shut down portions of its network and take some of its systems offline. And again, this was August 14th. We're a month out from that. Now, of course, having a company disclose uh, a breach as it's happening um, is, is not safe because other people will seek to try to exploit whatever weakness is in the system. Uh, but still, they did not really need to disclose this, um, legally speaking. Um, I'm sure they did for financial reasons and uh, shareholder reasons. Um, they took immediate steps to shut down portions of the network uh, and then take some of the systems offline. That's, that's sequestering. And as a result, the group had to revert to what is called manual ordering and processing procedures, and uh, that has led to elevated level of consumer product availability. So quite a hit for them. We'll take a look at their chart as well. We're down uh, 238 today. And uh, after quite a big jump, actually, up at 170, a uh, gap up on some significant, significant volume. The downward trajectory today is not on an immense amount of volume by any means, especially since the last days uh, with volume, which actually were uh, you know highs in their own respect, especially on the yearly high, you had about um, equal kind of volume when you had this breakup uh, just about to the 170 area. Um, so again, disclosing this and working to try to get it solved, in my opinion, if you're looking at it just from a traditional perspective, is actually admirable. Um, it's not good that they got hit, and we don't exactly know why they got hit and what the vulnerability was. Was it something like a zero day that nobody knew about, or was it uh, laxed procedures? Uh, it's hard to tell um, without having the company kind of disclose those things, but I do believe that it's nice that they put that out there and so that we all kind of understand, especially if you're a shareholder of, uh, of Clorox. One of the big, big news stories, and I saw this early on Saturday morning, um, it was posted on one of the news websites I go on to. Uh, the IRS is actually planning to hire 3,700 auditors to crack down on wealthy tax dodgers. And a few months ago, I spoke about the really complex way um, that the, extra the extraordinarily wealthy um, can kind of hide some of their assets and avoid some of the taxes. And, and, and that ends up hurting a lot of people. 
Um, so here, the federal agency issued a statement on Friday uh, saying that it plans to fill positions at more than 250 locations nationwide. Uh, the next wave of hiring will help the IRS add key talents like tax accountants. And really, you know, we, I can talk a little bit more in the future about um, how some of these researchers are kind of guessing where they're hiding things and how they're, you know, essentially trying to find some of these hidden assets. But it really is uh, a massive cat and mouse game. Folks, stay tuned for the short segment. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So the, the hot news last week was the ARM IPO. Is this what we have? Yeah, perfect. So that saw quite a surge uh, this is obviously a, a chip manufacturer. Um, we saw quite a surge on it. It was a 25% increase at the IPO, uh, which was the initial selling price of 51 apiece, and that ended at 63.59. And today, it has taken uh, quite a substantial downturn. Um, this is pretty quick for IPOs to do this. This does happen with IPOs, but it is uh, very quick. There's a lot of discussion that uh, maybe it was overvalued, and that was happening before the IPO was released as well. Uh, this is coming out from SoftBank. Um, so yeah, quite a substantial drop down. We are at 57.64 right now. Let me see here real quick. This is gonna give me this, right? Okay, perfect. I'm just making sure, because it was glitching last week and I wanna make sure this is really, this is what this looks like when you've when you only been trading for a few days. So yeah, 
we had a massive sell down getting all the way and back to 55 right here um, and then coming up all the way we were at 57 uh, 64 it was down four uh, percent pre-market it does now have a um, price target of 46 by some uh, larger institutional investors um, but we'll wait to see how that pans out there are obviously some issues with china as well as that sino-american tech war kind of continues and again there's fears of potential overvaluation but we'll see as the time goes forward and we really get to see um, into their uh, financials as well some kind of cool news to wrap up the show um, agility robotics they're opening a humanoid robot factory obviously elon musk had been wanting to open that up uh, beforehand and he'd been sharing some uh you know potential concepts some of his showings uh, this is called the digit uh, this new factory which agility has dubbed the robo fab will produce up to 10,000 units a year and employ 500 people is that job security if you keep making these i don't know let's see according to the coo andre campbell formerly apple's senior director of ipad operations that's some hot name right in there folks thank you so much for joining me i'll be with you um just for the last news segment and i believe tom will be back tomorrow thank you so much